My name is Carol Wiggins. I am originally from Tupelo, Mississippi. I taught school here in Mobile for 25 years, and I retired from teaching and went to be a volunteer at the Mobile Museum of Art, and I decided to give painting a try myself, and I really enjoyed it. Sorry. <laughs> Texan by birth, went to high school in New York State, came uh, lived in Colorado for a little while as a little girl, then went to New York State, um, went to high school in New York, fabulous school with lots of art and lots of music. We did musicals every year and madrigals and all kinds of things. Then I decided to go back to Colorado. Something drew me, University of Colorado. So uh, that's where I graduated from after, uh, it took me five years because I skied. <laughs> Yeah, I loved it. So then I um, uh, married a Californian and we were out there and then we, as his job took us, well we went to Arizona because he had to finish school there. And then he, uh, we went to travel. We traveled with his company to uh, Guam, Jamaica. We lived there. There's our kid, one of our daughters was born in Guam and um, so we got to travel when we were there to Japan and China, and that's where I first experienced the Japanese culture in particular. And in the Japanese culture, I found a beauty and a simplicity in their art. I just, I, I've always loved it. I just, it, there's something simplistic in some ways, and uh, what looks simple though isn't. <laughs> And I found that out when we came here to Mobile, um, I got involved with art and the Museum of Art and uh, after I went back to get a master's to teach school and teaching little children, I decided I wanted to teach art and so I went to the Museum of Art and Miss Terry Baker and I got working on the education department there. I didn't do any organizing, I just loved to teach. To children and in doing that um, it led me somehow through some of that to Mary Rodney and Mar uh, Mary was working on the Japanese garden house there near the park and was um, doing Sunye artwork and had a group started there and so I joined them and absolutely fell in love with it it's it's my favorite form of art. I like to do watercolor anyway, but this, uh, you know, I'm a painter that likes to mush around and but I did oil and everything, and I love that too. But I get it all over me. Somehow with Sumie, I don't seem to. Fortunately, because it doesn't come out of your clothes. <laughs> uh, but I really like the the idea of it. So that's where I've gotten into doing the Sumie. Uh, really seriously painting, I've loved art forever, but I think probably, oh, I don't want to date myself, uh, <laughs> I, I would guess seriously about 25 years, really. You'd think I'd gotten better, but <laughs> it's just, it's partially my spirit that gets, gets uh, satisfied. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> my name's Karen McGagan. I've uh, been doing Sumie for like maybe 10 years and I also paint in watercolor and uh, botanicals and oils. And I do a little bit of it all, but I especially love the Sumie. My husband was in the Navy and, we, and he had to serve two years in Okinawa, Japan with three sons. And when we got to Japan, I thought, well, my goodness, I would really love to learn more about Japan and their art because I was a, I am a master's in biology, but I thought I'd rather really like to paint. And so I, it was a typhoon coming in to the island, and so I looked up a painting teacher and found my 
long time painting teacher that typhoon weekend, <laughs> I call it that. And so we connected very well because I, Heidi, her name, her Japanese name was Hide, but she thought if she changed her name to Heidi, it would be easier for Americans to remember her name. <clears throat> and so we worked together till we lost. I lost her last week, last year, because of her health. Did her in, and I, every day I miss her, wondering what my painting would be like without her. She was a great influence to me, not only artistically, but when we were back in the States, I could call her up and say, can you tell me about the Japanese culture? Is that right? Or how much should I learn something new about the Japanese culture? Was maybe changing? And so she was very gracious to answer all my questions. So she taught me sumi e. I would, that's how I pronounce it. It might be somewhat incorrect, but it's the best, best I can do. So, so when we got back, my husband did his two years in, in Japan with the Navy. When we returned to the States, he was employed at the University of Minnesota Medical Center. So people knew I had been in Japan and had been involved in painting. I said, wouldn't you like to teach us a little bit more about it? Finally, I gave in because I thought maybe I would just paint now that I was back in the States. Another military wife who had been, whose husband had been with MacArthur after World War II, she had also done some research and some painting of the Japanese methods. And so that would be about 37 years ago. She convinced me not to just paint, but to form a chapter of the Sumie Society of America, which had been formed earlier. And so I had heard about it in Japan already. And so I uh, gave in to her wishes to um, make our own chapter here in Mobile 37 years ago. And I wish we still could have Marguerite Hardesty with us tonight because she would enjoy, so enjoy, the fact that we were still painting and showing our paintings. Her husband was, her husband was with MacArthur after World War II, and so when, when we would go by, by their house to check out what Marguerite was doing, Colonel Hard, Hardesty would always, I had a two-year-old, a three-year-old with me, and he loved, Colonel Hardesty loved to do the, the, pop, the tops that used to be very popular back in those days with a, a three-year-old. And so we had a wonderful visit with, before we would go to get to our other sons at school. Also, my, my uh, teaching friend, in Japan uh, was very good with origami, the folding of a square of paper. And so I also took that up because I had started it with my three little boys, something to entertain them with in, in, back in Minnesota where we from, were from. And so I, you might, some people might see my origami cards around town because I've been still, I still do origami paper. I, I paint a picture and then I put an object on, like some fish on top of my painting or some um, wedding, a wedding couple on top of my wedding card. And you can find that in Innova Arts here in Mobile. Sumi is the word, the Japanese word for ink, black ink, and eh is the word, one of the, one of the words in Japanese to, for a painting. So sumi eh is ink painting. And it can be done 
with watercolor as well as ink. Simeate art originated in um, the Asian countries, China, Japan. Actually, it originated in China over 2,000 years ago. And uh, over the years, it traveled to various other um, Asian countries. Um, and since then, of course, it has traveled um, across the ocean to, um, to the United States. Uh, sumie is, um, sumi is the Japanese word for ink. And when you say sumi a, it means ink painting. So we paint primarily with ink and some watercolor on rice paper, which is very different from regular paper because there's no sizing and it just, uh, you have to control your moisture and um, it's very delicate, very delicate. Shibui chapter, um, we are um, a, a chapter with the Sumie Society of America. Um, Shibui chapter is located here in Mobile. Sumie Society of America has about 10 chapters located in various parts of the United States. Um, I am the president of our local Shibui chapter. Uh, well, Mary Rodney got me into Sumie. I was doing watercolor and um, acrylics, and uh, some of my other friends were doing Sumie with Mary, and they said, you know, you need to come and paint with us. And um, I, I didn't go for a long time because I had a lot going on, and I knew it was another art form, and I would be spending more money on art supplies. But anyway, I finally gave in and went, and I love it. Oh, gosh. I think that's the other part that is so wonderful, besides the actual art, are the people. Uh, I'm kind of a people person anyway, and they're, they're, they're so real and so fun, <laughs> and we're each, so many individuals, so different. That's the thing I think I like, that their artwork, that shows you something about, it, it brings out that individual artist and personality and I and you so you get to know all these very different people but you have that this art in common and it's a lovely we have a good time and we learn a lot from each other and as I said Marguerite talked me into starting a chapter of the Sumie Society of America when I um, with school kids I ask them to say the name Suie, and then I can, I can just tell them that now they can speak Japanese. <laughs> so. Nature, right off, first thing I think of, birds, flowers, trees, animals, sometimes a person every now and then, but, but mostly nature. Of course, we're nature, but that, I don't know, that's, that's it for me. Seasons, and the Asians are very good at uh, uh, depicting each season. They're very important to them. And they're called treasures and gentlemen, I think. The four gentlemen, no? Well, it's something has to just kind of touch me right here to do, you know, and that's when I do my best. If it's something that just inspires me to paint it. I think it's the beauty of nature because I'm a biologist, first of all, and it's just amazing how much our nature has been created, how beautiful the creation has occurred to make the nature around us exist. Oh, everywhere, everywhere, nature, um, uh, photographs, just, you know, everywhere you look, there's, there's some, some inspiration, you know, books, books, I look at a lot of art books and get ideas from other artists, and um, so just, you know, inspiration is everywhere. Well, it's not easy, you know, and uh, it's a very delicate, uh, and you have to have a light touch, but it's so rewarding when you do uh, something that turns out so nice, you know. And I, I did that 
painting uh, that's down there of the senior, that's my husband. And so, and I was surprised how well it turned out. I think it's the challenge, you know, and when you do something that turns out nice, it's just wonderful, you know, and uh, it is a delicate type medium, and it's, you just really have to uh, work at your craft with it, you know. My other medium, I guess, would have been when I have three sons cooking supper and dinner and <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> But also, I think the origami, which to me, that when I first thought, thought about learning about origami, because I thought, well, maybe I would like to ma my major in in mathematics in college, because that was always interesting to me to be to do math in high school, and so because origami is a little bit about geometry at least, but also. Um, mathematics. So when I've read about the Japanese people who are involved with origami, when they learn about, Japan, about origami, several of them will be coming. They will become eventually mathematicians or physicians because it has that detail, needing to be paying attention to the detail. Well, of course, I'm most familiar with my own, but I think I want to refer to my friend Satomi's ink painting of trees. It's so Satomi. <laughs> As I said, we express ourselves in, 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 in our painting. As an artist, probably all do. But that's lovely. And, and the tigers, all of the tigers, I love them. I did one, but I didn't. I was going to redo it because it was a sort of sketchy. But I liked it because I it, I brought some humor into it. With uh, I, I put a bee out on a bush, and then I was going to name it. Um, what, what did I? Oh, I was going to name it, the tiger talking to the bee and saying, "I like your stripes." <laughs> I'm crazy, but the uh, Charles Woods painting. Our dear Charles Wood, who started a whole Japanese garden and house and everything. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And I did. I've, I only met him a couple of times. An elegant gentleman, soft-spoken, so uh, so in, inspiring. And, uh, just a, a, I, I, I don't know what else to say that I because I didn't know him well. I just that was my first impression. But his art is simplistic and beautiful, just like Matsumiye should be. Some of the my paintings that are down there, one of them has my African violets in it, you know, and they're just beautiful, purple. And then the others are like the little boathouse, for instance. I painted that more than one time, but I love that scene, you know, and have been able to do that and do it fairly well. Well, I I was very, I can't believe that I was once, two years ago, I was given the, by the judge, you know, judges are different, but the judge chose my painting for the best of show. And that just thrilled me. One of my students, okay. One of my students. <laughs> um, it, it's just I can just see it from out of the corner of my eye right now. It's my my pen, my pond. I pond. I encourage our my students to paint what's around them, like, so they don't have to take just paint from a book or from um, the air. <laughs> I shouldn't say that was what I should should have said. But the, the my pond out in Sam's is um, pictured in the fall, and that's what run the best of the show. And then last two summers ago, I was able to be up in Minnesota, where, if you can tell by my accent, I'm from Minnesota. And I was at a beautiful site in northern Minnesota, 
my family usually went up to canoe in northern Minnesota with all the water, waters and canoe area and on the Cas Cascading Falls, painting one another nice award. Yes, I do have a I do have a favorite. My um, my Japanese umbrella ladies called "Today's a Beautiful Day" with the calligraphy. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> my name is Estella Dorn. I'm retired. Well, I'm retired, and I used to be the executive director of Mobile International Festival, and. I have always enjoyed art and I have gotten to know so many artists in Mobile like Mary Rodney. Mary is a very close friend of mine and of course I also know other artists involved in Sumie. And uh, like as I said, I've always liked art and Asian art is very close to my heart and my culture because I'm from the Philippines. It's just so refreshing, so light, so airy. And um, I'm glad I came because looking at all so many, many different expressions by the artists, it's so nice. So I'm glad they came. Uh, of course, you know, I love animals, I love flowers. And that's another thing about Sumie because it deals with nature, it deals with human nature, and how artists look at things and they express themselves with their words. And um, I like the ones with, with the flowers. It's so, so light, so, so, so springy. But there's one art in particular that really drew me to it. And I met the artist, Doris, the one with a child reaching out for a koi in a river, in a pond, not river pond. And for me, I just saw that as there's a story behind it. Yes, yes, it really caught my attention. Uh huh. It, it really did, and I just stared at it, and you know, I conjured my own story behind it <laughs> about a little child. When I, and then when I talked to Doris. And she told me the story behind it. So, quite interesting. Um, I came with two other friends from Sam's. We're the last ones to get through all of the artworks because we've been so interested. I never realized there were such different, I guess, techniques in Sumie. Um, and Mary and I have always walked together a lot and we talk a good bit about art techniques. But I'm still so surprised to see such a variety of art being used in, the, in all of these talented, gifted people. It's so impressive. This is such a wonderful gallery of art to have here. In fact, Mary has worked from the very beginning of the Sims Library. We had the art display set up at the Sims Library and Mary has acted as the curator of that. She, of course, you can see she has so many artist friends, and I've helped her, but, and before COVID, we had rotating art displays just about every three months with artists like Karen and different ones, Susan, Terry Baker and uh, Mary, of course, and different ones that I see here, Satomi. Um, but of course, since COVID, we have not been able to do that. But seeing all this really encourages me, and I know it will, and it will marry also, that we need to get our art display started back again, because it's a cultural, cultural gift in our area, because most of our residents probably wouldn't come here, but they will come to the Sims Library to see art on display. So it sort of has pet me up that we need to get started back again. I'm basically, now we each have a, class, a group that has painting at the Japanese garden, the little white house uh, by the f former fish hatchery. And so, that one of my students 
because I think I could say, tell, say Charles Wood was one of my students. He said, "How about how about making a uh, a garden?" And so he got permission from the family living across the street from the fish hatchery because they thought I think it was and maybe I think it was still a uh, what's the word I want um, a flower group had the house and so we got, were able to have the house for our glasses our painting times and we have paintings hanging in the house and Colonel Colonel Britt was in Vietnam and so he has we have paintings po photographs of both Colonel Britt he was in the prison of war and when McCain was supposed to get them out they, the Vietnamese had moved the prisoners to another location because they wanted to save them in the prison of war camp. But finally, they got the prisoner. They got out of the prisoner of war camp. And when, we, but Jim McCain's leg was broken. Maybe everybody knows that because he was a good senator so they and Barbara's husband was a pilot and so I said why, why don't you try parachuting out of my plane and so she Barbara did and she broke her leg by, by being whipped around by the wind and so when they were having their welcoming home party for Jim McCain they um, invited they said well we can't ta dance today, but the next time we're together, we might be able to dance. So. Hi, I'm Yuko Jordan. Um, I'm a president of the Japanese Garden Foundation. And, uh, Japanese Garden located by the Municipal Park, and uh, it's um, one of the, actually, artists in the Sumia Society, uh, Charles Wood, and uh, Mary Rodney, and uh, several people helped create that area to be from old uh, fish hatchery to a garden. The, the group of ladies, uh, Barbara Britons and several people just volunteer, clean up after the Hurricane Frederick or something. And uh, But uh, I think Charles Wood, he was a, he, is mem he was a member of this. And then uh, one day they're like, wouldn't that be nice if we have a real bamboo forest that we can paint? So that's how Charles got an idea, like, oh, let's make, turn this to Japanese garden. And uh, he told me this like 25 years ago, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's crazy. What an idea to have a Japanese garden. Like, he doesn't know how much it takes and what kind of effort. But, oh my gosh, he was not a, just a dreamer, but he was a doer. And uh, you, you can see he's a uh, Sumia painting. He didn't start till he's in 70, but it's like really wonderful work. And uh, and he kept at it and the Japanese, uh, most of the Sumia ladies, they volunteer there and they keep up the house. And uh, it's a nice place to enjoy the art. And we are proud to be a part of this community, so. I think it has become part of who I am because it's given me, because I've been able to express that part of me here better than anywhere else. Of course, I've lived here now 40 years, which is surprising. I had grown up moving every two or three years in my life, even as a, uh, after, before I was married and after. So uh, this has been a place where I could. Um, develop that talent and these are the most inspiring group of people and encouraging that you could ever know and that's what I think that any good artist needs that. Well you meet so many different and varied personalities and people you know it just has broadened my horizons if you so to speak and uh, it's 
not only uh, you learn a lot from other artists, working with them and talking to them and and studying their art, but it's an, also a nice socialization aspect of it too. The people that I haven't got to see the last couple of years because of the pandemic, they are the heart of Mobile, in my opinion. Uh, they have the spirit of Mobile and they are willing to learn new things and express them in beautiful ways. Authors, musicians, painters, vocalists, all add to the beauty of Mobile, in my opinion. Oh, it's wonderful. You meet so many people. We have friends, you know, everywhere you go, you you see someone and everyone is so encouraging and um, complimentary and helpful, you know, with, with art. So it's, yes, being in the art world is is wonderful. It really is. It's wonderful. I love it. I've been in... Um I've been in Mobile all of my life, except for just a short period of time. So, and in Sims, a, a good bit of it too. And I'm a teacher, taught at Sims schools for 26 years and then retired. But then I've been involved with a lot of different groups and uh, nonprofit groups with the library and the Sims Women's Club, Sims Heritage Park, the, histro the historical park. Uh, and also with city um, committees and so forth. So, yes, yeah, Sims, uh, this is my home. In fact, I graduated from the University of South Alabama a few years ago. <laughs> but, uh, and it's amazing to see every time you come how it continues to change and progress. It's still a very beautiful campus, and I'm proud of that, that they have maintained such a um, emphasis on the green here. Everything's not been cut down to make room for buildings and so forth. So that's a great achievement as far as I'm concerned. But being in this area is, means much to me. It's home. And this is where my family's at. This is where my friends are. And uh, this is where I love. Well, you know what's nice about Mobile is that the community, in many ways, it's very intimate because wherever you go, you meet people, you meet friends, and one friend leads to another. And there are so many artists in Mobile, and it really makes the community so, so focused, so cultured. And, and for me, art is so important in life. It pulls everybody together, because life is art. Mary is, um, she, she's what, what we call in Japanese painting my sensei. You probably heard that with karate. <laughs> and sensei means teacher. And so she was the first teacher that I had and, and taught me sumie. Mary and I have been friends, I guess, for 40, well, about 30 years at least. We started out in baseball together with our boys being on the same teams. And since then, it's developed into different projects, different activities, and sims mostly. And um, we've been friends and have a lot of things in common and have worked to raise money for uh, like the Sims Library, Sims Women's Club projects, and Sims Heritage Park. She is a wonderful resource and I've always loved her artwork. Back in, um, I guess that was 2008, we started raising funds to get a library in Sims, along with Commissioner Steve Nodine back then. And it was our job as the Sims Library Committee, and it was nine of us, Mary and I were on the committee as well. We raised over $350,000 to help get the library situated in Sims. We have a beautiful Sims Regional Library now because of the efforts made by our community and by that committee who worked so hard 
really within only a year's time to raise that money and it showed the commissioners, the Mobile County commissioners, how much we wanted a library in Sims. She has taught a lot of different art classes at the Sims Regional Library, especially during the summer, during the children's uh, programs during the summer. And she has, she has taught in the schools. She teaches at the Sims Senior Center different art techniques. Mary has shared her talents with so many different groups, I would, I would not even begin to try to name them all. She is a giver and um, so admire her. I love her and admire and I love her heart for people and her love of the artworks. I have known the Rodney, not just Mary, but the whole Rodney family uh, since the boys were very young. Um, we're bonded. Dr. Chuck is a gentleman and uh, such a supporter of the arts as well and so gifted like Mary. He does the haiku poetry. Um, I just feel very honored to know Mary, Dr. Chuck, and all three of their sons and their families. Well, through Mary Rodney, you know, and I'm sure that most people say Mary Rodney, but she's been involved and in is uh, with it for years and uh, she's been instrumental in keeping the uh, Sumier group going. And uh, she, of course, she, she and I have gotten to be good friends and we've gone to a couple of national conventions together, you know, and, uh, and uh, just enjoy being with her. And she's just such a nice person, generous person. Mary and I met, I think we met before she volunteered for Mobile International Festival. And our friendship really just developed. I respect her so much. She is a very sensitive, but so sincere. You can see it just, you know, being a friend you can see it looking at her and for me she's one person that i am really very glad that she and i are friends and so with her husband dr rodney they're very very good people i'm so proud of all of the people that i have known and have it, Talk and come to joy, find joy in using the, their brushes and paint different objects, different scenes, different flowers, different animals. So I can't my my heart bursts that they everybody has taken heart to enjoy the sumie, which I so enjoy. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Rodning. I am um, Professor Emeritus in the Department of Surgery, College of Medicine, University of South Alabama. And I want to extend gratitude uh, to uh, Ms. Flanders, the Executive Director of the Libraries, and Ms. Paula Webb, the Director of uh, Communications and uh, Outreach Endeavors for the libraries of the University of South Alabama for providing a venue for the artists of the Shibui chapter of the Sumie Society of America to exhibit. And the Shibui chapter is celebrating its 35th uh, anniversary uh, today. And uh, Ms. Uh, Wiggins currently serving as uh, chair of uh, the Shibui uh, chapter. And the message I wish to convey is this. If we, if you and I, are to live abundant, authentic, conscientious, deliberate, meaningful, purposeful, flourishing, and joyful lives, we must embrace the arts. The arts in and of itself, the arts for its own sake, and the arts in complementarity with humanistic, 
scientific, athletic, and re recreational uh, domains of uh, endeavor and uh, knowledge. The arts are fundamental and vital to our humanity. Inasmuch as the arts stimulate us in body and mind, um, soul and uh, spirit. The arts enable and inspire us by stimulating creativity, by stimulating an appreciation for the beautiful, by stimulating an appreciation uh, for the good, and by fostering uh, the attributes of imagination, intuition, uh, innovation, reflection, empathy, tolerance, understanding, and, and wisdom. And the arts uh, transform and uh, broaden uh, the horizon of our uh, thoughts, our assumptions, our perceptions, our perspectives, our ideas and beliefs, and broaden and transform the horizon of our of emotions, feelings, and uh, moves. And you and I, as members of this community, as advocates for the common good, as advocates for common sense, as artists, as patrons of the arts, have the freedom, the privilege, the responsibility and obligation to share, promote, and support the arts, philosophically, practically, and uh, financially and the obligation and responsibility to educate and nurture succeeding generations regarding the value, virtue, and validity of artistic endeavors and artistic uh, traditions. We sincerely hope <clears throat> that the um, individuals who have attended the exhibition this evening uh, have been uh, blessed uh, by it. We sincerely hope that uh, they and those who will dare are well, healthy, safe, strong, courageous, artistic, passionate, and compassionate. And may each of us um, experience the love, grace, and the mercy of our divine uh, creator. We wish you a blessed and banner evening, ladies and gentlemen. And we wish you uh, shalom. Thank you.